good, good morning, everyone. So as the first step, I would like to invite our panelists to the stage. Uh, so um, Dieter Van Utwang from uh, Clarin, Alba Irolo. Uh, we have Emilia Blotier, Simon Craig, and Maciej Durcho. So please uh, take your seats. As, uh, as you have seen in the in the program, this panel is about uh, cooperation between various initiatives that were launched either some time ago or recently in the area of social sciences and humanities. And all these initiatives have developed uh, or brought some resources, developed a portal for the users or done uh, many other things in this area to provide resources for their research. Now, they are very different as, as we will hear, um, but this panel is here to somehow spearhead some type of cooperation, which of course we already have in some sense, but, uh, but maybe we can do more in this respect. So as a first step, I would like to ask uh, our panelists one by one um, to, uh, to present their, their view or their pitch of their own work, uh, what they did, and also if they see uh, where the collaboration can start. So as, a, as the first one, I would like to invite Matej Durcho from uh, Austria to uh, please, please take your, just keep, uh, you, you can stay at, the, at your place and we will switch the slides uh, for you. So uh, please, uh, the first slide, yeah. Okay, Matej. Okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, I, I was asked by Jan, or we were asked by Jan to be very uh, brief and have just one slide. So, uh, and I thought you will, you already heard something about the marketplace, um, ho hopefully on multiple occasions and also on Monday by, by Lore. Uh, so I didn't want to repeat that, but focus actually on this um, common or innovative or aspect of this, uh, not innovation, but not alone. So how can we go from here together? Um, so I consider, uh, or we consider, I hope it's us, uh, this marketplace as a, uh, not the one catalog for everything, but uh, one part or one node in a, in a growing network of aggregations and, and discovery solutions. Uh, and I'd also, it's a network, it's a graph in my view, and so not a tree, so there won't be one catalog at the top that will uh, be the entry point for everybody and everything. Uh, and so this, so I see room for the various discovery platforms where, that have their dedicated audiences and, and focus. Um, um, yeah, and so we need to sort out, so to say, where uh, where they go together or where they have their specificities. Uh, and the question of the kind of next level uh, integration or how can we move for forward from this um, number of um, uh, catalogs or discovery solutions that we have at the moment. Uh, for me, one tentative answer is, is the EOSC and the uh, uh, the, the EOSC resource catalog and open a research graph, uh, which um, mm, mm, uh, which uh, pr promotes the idea of of uh, not just of, of uh, having discovery for all resource types. So it's not just publications or not just data sets, uh, but also software services, training resources, and whatever else else needed. Um, and so this is also similar as we have it in in the marketplace. Uh, or quite aligned, although in marketplace we have a specific focus, for example, on training materials and, and software and services, and, and more the methods than, than the data. So uh, you wouldn't look for data sets in, in the marketplace. Um, and um, so uh, there is a, this, this picture that is there is, uh, or this, the snippet that is from Paolo Mangi's uh, presentation on uh, integrations on the level of, of, of EOSC. Uh, so it's more like a teaser where you see that it's part of a bigger picture where everything could come together in the wonderful EOS uh, resource catalog. Um, yeah, and I think I should stop here for, <laughs> for the sake of time. Okay, so thanks to Mathieu for bringing also the EOSC perspective into, into all this and we can then discuss more. Now, what I forgot to say is that please hold your questions. There, 
we hope to have a lot of time, as Matej said, the panelists will be brief and then we will have a discussion after all five of them say uh, something. So for the for the next presentation, and I, I have to apologize again, I forgot about uh, Sona Arastek. Uh, uh, so uh, I don't know who of you will talk now, uh, but please, uh, now it's your time. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I tried to prepare a three 30 minutes Pitch uh, describing the triple project and more precisely the Go triple platform. Um, <clears throat> so the Go triple platform is a multilingual discovery uh, platform for the social sciences and uh, humanities. Use and reuse of SSH publications remain suboptimal and interdisciplinary interdisciplinarity collaboration opportunities are still often missed. So. GoTriple uh, aims to change that and it seeks to offer a contribution to address these issues and break down the siloed approach or that is often common to SSH. Uh, the aim is to make it easier for uh, researchers, scientists, but not only, also citizens and business organizations to access scientific publication with a focus on SSH. The platform is developed, so as I said, by the Triple Project, a EU-funded project that started in October 2019 and will end uh, at the end of next March next year. And the platform uh, presents data, as you can see uh, in the slide, three kinds of data. That is to say publications, including data sets, and also projects and profiles of researchers. At the time of speaking, um, GoTriple is having uh, a bit more than 4 million SSH publications from large aggregators and national providers alike, including DOIG, DOIB, OpenAir, uh, Isidora, Biblioteca Naoki, and ZRC Sazu data. And about uh, a bit more than 20,000 SSH EU-funded projects from uh, Horizon Europe, Horizon uh, 2020, and FP7 WAC programs. The platform also includes innovative services, such as a map and graph visualizing search queries, an open annotation tool, a crowdfunding service, a social network, and a recommender system. These services are entirely a uh, part of the platform. They have been developed to overcome disciplinary fragmentation and foster new ways of collaboration. The development of GoTriple is based on two main key pillars, uh, open science and co-design open science practices. Um, it has been uh, crucial for the design and development of the platform, as well as the adoption of a user-centered approach. Since the beginning of the project, researchers have been involved in and contributed to the design of the core aspects of the platform. Our ambition is to provide a central access point that allows researchers to explore, find, access and reuse materials such as literature data projects, researchers' profiles at European scale in 10 uh, European languages, let's say 10 languages. Uh, I will explain it to you uh, later. So Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, German, Greek, Croatian, French, English, and we uh, very recently added also the Ukrainian language uh, also as a support for the Ukrainian uh, scientific community. The project involves then uh, 21 uh, partners coming from 15 different European countries. The consortium is composed of various stakeholders and it is probably uh, one answer of the question about how to collaborate because in this consortium, we're having, of course, national research centers, business organization, but also ERICS. And of course, Clarin ERIC is part of uh, this consortium. Um, our, yes, our developers and data managers are working with aggregators and data providers, final users, as uh, already stated, are heavily involved and the platform will become the discovery service of the European research 
Infrastructure Operas, Operas IESBL, devoted to open scholarly communication in SSH. Uh, the platform is therefore put um, uh, part, sorry, of varied geographical, disciplinary and economic environment to become a fair and transparent single access point to SSH. And as a conclusion, um, it will keep on evolving in this remaining month of the project. Uh, new features for registered users um, are in the um, developers' backlog, but please visit uh, the platform, gotriple.eu, um, because the platform is open. You can also create your account. And what is important to us is to get uh, the user's feedback. So do not hesitate to give us your feedback. When you, when you register, when you use the platform, uh, you're having um, a, a back button that you can use, and then you fill in a formula, and then we will see your comment. Um, yes, uh, I would say that's all for the moment. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for your presentation of, of Go Triple. So for the next presentation, I believe that would be Simon. Just wait for the... Yes. No, no. Uh, Europeana. <laughs> okay. So Simon is next. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Please. Hello, everyone. Uh, it was the 10th of November 2021, and also the first day of the European Annual Conference last year, when the European Commission published the recommendation on a common European data space for cultural heritage, highlighting that Europeana, as uh, Europe's digital platform for cultural heritage, would be at the basis of the data space. And also that the data space for cultural heritage would be one of the 14 data spaces uh, under the Digital Europe program to be built over the next decade. So after uh, less than one year later, on the 1st of September of this year, Europeana entered a new phase that we conceived as a transition phase of two years that will uh, uh, last uh, until August 2024, um, that will give us the opportunity to improve the infrastructure that we have already uh, in place. Europeana is not a, a synonym uh, for the data space, is a steward of uh, the data space for cultural heritage. And we'll also continue running a particular initiative called the European Research that um, is there just to foster collaborations with the research infrastructures, institutes, projects, and uh, university. Uh, since it was funded in 2015, European Research has um, Consider with the greatest interest the development of research infrastructures, just like Clarin, in the um, social sciences and the humanities. Now we want to do that uh, with a more ambitious goal that is to uh, foster our collaborations with uh, partners in researchers and our education to link the data space for cultural heritage to the European Open Science Cloud. And we already know that the data space for cultural heritage will offer more opportunity to uh, foster the use of digital cultural heritage in the herit uh, higher education and, uh, and research. Um, a concrete example of the path that we have in mind is given by the Jupyter notebooks that uh, for um, um, Europeana uh, newspaper text uh, processing with clarin uh, tools that were presented uh, yesterday, both in the session uh, learning um, um, teaching with Clarin and at the bazaar. And not by chance, we decide to test these uh, uh, tools uh, in, uh, through a workshop organized by Clarin and Europeana, but also to publish the Jupyter notebooks on the, um, the SSH uh, open marketplace that, as a gateway to the European Open Science Cloud. So, uh, I read at the last point of my, of my pitch uh, that is about engagement with academic and research communities. And it's an important point because we, within the data space, 
really we want we rely on the collaboration of research infrastructures to collect input from academic and research communities before and not after planning supporting and developing new uh, capacity building resources training materials and especially uh, tools and uh, we too uh, believe to use the, the the words of the title of this panel that uh, we cannot innovate and alone thanks okay thanks uh, for alba to alba and then uh, then we have uh, uh, then we have uh, simon for the elexis uh, yes. work in project uh, thank you can you go one slide back please not forward back mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so because <clears throat> I wanted to uh, show the title. So what I'm talking about is European <clears throat> lexicographic infrastructure. And now you can go forward, uh, which is basically an infrastructure, but it was also a project, uh, H2020 project, which ended um, just two months ago uh, in July. And one point I would like to make here on the first slide is that uh, the project managed to create quite a large community of 73 institutions from 35 countries, um, <clears throat> which will continue in this or that way. That will be on the last slide. And the, la and the last thing, there are many, many things <clears throat> I would like to say, but I don't have time please go to the website and check it out. Uh, next one. <clears throat> but the main point here is, Alexis is about dictionaries. So whenever you see a keyword dictionary, this is where Alexis is. And uh, we try to show here some parts. If you have a dictionary, what can you do with it, with this new infrastructure? Uh, basically, what you can do is convert it to some common format, uh, then use some nice stuff. You can edit it, you can link it, enrich it, like get the data from the corpus uh, into your dictionary and so on. Uh, but the important part here, I think also for the future, is the linking part, because dictionaries uh, are and, well, used to be uh, quite isolated things. Uh, and now uh, the time came, came let's say, uh, when we have to link everything. We have to link everything, and this is what we try to do with this project, and we will still continue to do in the future in something that we call a dictionary matrix. And you can check it out also on uh, one of these um, um, addresses. So if you think about it, when you need semantic data for anything that we are talking about now, this is where you will be able or you can or will be able to go in the future in this infrastructure. Uh, the next one. Uh, this is not just about SSH. It's not just about linguistics and getting semantic data for people who need to learn languages or stuff like that. It's also for artificial intelligence because I can tell you that no lexicographer is really satisfied with what is used for word senses, integration, concepts, and so on in artificial intelligence at the moment. And we all think that something better is needed. And this is also something we will do in the future based on uh, what was done in the project. And the last one, collaboration. So this is the future of Alexis. One thing is that we will set up a case center for lexicography inside Clarin. Uh, which was mentioned by Bente, I think, some mm, yesterday or the day before. Uh, and the other thing is not everyone, uh, not everyone that was in Alexis is part of Clarin or Draya or any existing infrastructure. So for this purpose, we will uh, set up, this is in the process now, Alexis Association, basically for uh, further development 
because the K Center is more or less about knowledge, sharing knowledge. But the association is about further development of all the data tools and services that was developed in, in the project itself. We will search for funding to be sure and, uh, well, seek for general collaboration with every, anybody uh, interested in semantics and lexicography and dictionaries. Okay, thanks to Simon. And finally, we have uh, Dieter for Clarin. Thank you very much. Um, I'll try to keep it short in the interest of time. I think, uh, first of all, our um, portal, the Virtual Language Observatory is, is quite well known in this audience. So you can just summarize it as kind of large searching portal where we harvest metadata from all kinds of sources, not only Clarence centers, and where we make that available. Then over to the more, say, maybe philosophical level or so, how can we innovate together? I think it's basically a matter of, of uh, three layers. And first one, very basic uh, layer, you could say, is to make sure that there is a collegial and, and peaceful coexistence of the uh, infrastructures and the platforms that are around. We've all been reminded in the past couple of months how important a peaceful uh, working setting is for, for being able to be productive and to deliver something. And then secondly, and I think it's a very important one, uh, it's already a bit further, is making sure that we avoid reduplication of work. And I think especially in the context of, for instance, European Open Science Cloud, we've seen that that is an important thing to keep in mind. It's also why I'm so happy, for instance, that with the establishment of the SSH Open Marketplace, this has been taken into account as of the beginning. So people have been thinking, okay, we don't want to, um, yeah, for instance, force uh, people to do double or triple triple metadata curation. We've seen in the sessions this morning how much effort it can be, how many uh, days of work it can be to get the metadata right. So if someone has invested time of making sure that that is available, then we should make, also make sure that that can be used in other contexts. And if there is some portal to aggregate the information, we should use the best curated metadata uh, available also goes for data, by the way, but but in, in the context of the metadata portals, we're mostly looking into the metadata and uh, making sure we don't uh, put extra work upon people's shoulder. We know very much, every one of you, how much effort it is to, to maintain a repository, to make sure that your, your data and metadata is in best order. So we should respect the work that has gone into that and try to uh, make use of that and, and not uh, reinvent wheels. And then finally, and of course, that is the most exciting one, making sure that we can kind of cross-connect component services and data sets to achieve synergies. That sounds, of course, very abstract and, and laudable, but I think um, what, what I personally really like to see there very much is a kind of Unix uh, style modular setup where you have many small components that do certain things very well. And where, again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you have to link to some dictionary entry, then you link to Alexis. If you want to search uh, over a huge uh, uh, data sets of, of, of uh, national libraries, uh, no, sorry, national libraries and national uh, newspapers, for instance, you go to Europeana. If you want to connect to uh, some bibliographical information and, and enriched information, well, then you go to the GoTriple platform. And if you want to uh, have uh, information about a uh, training course with relation to an SSH data set, you go to the SSH Open Marketplace. And connecting these things in, in kind of uniform and um, not too labor intensive way is, is a very laudable goal. And uh, yeah, personally, I hope that it would also be something that we can achieve. Of course, um, it's, it's nice also to be to sitting together here with all those platforms and initiatives here today, because uh, it, it's for a good reason. We are already having some kind of collaboration. We have achieved already some in, uh, level of integration, but of course, uh, I hope that could get even further and even better with uh, yeah, good mutual uh, interaction. Okay, thanks to Dieter. So now uh, we have some time for your questions. I, I actually plan to summarize what has been said, but as I see, uh, first of all, Dieter did most of the summarization <laughs> for me. And second, uh, I, it will be a relatively long speech because of course uh, all these initiatives are relatively diverse with different focus, uh, with different uses in mind, with different technical means, with a different level of aggregation. But now it's up to you to ask, uh, um, the questions, the difficult questions, the easy questions, whatever you have in mind, please ask. Okay. Uh, don't know if this is an easy or difficult question, but I'll ask it anyway. 
because we have so many different uh, SSH infrastructures, platforms here. So is anyone working on, let's call it, next generation metrics for acquiring information about the impact of the SSH infrastructures on scholarly practices? Or are we innovating by hunch? So who wants to take up this question? <laughs> that's, that's a big question. I would not say it's easy or difficult, but it's a big question. Anyone? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, obviously we're trying to, to measure, um, say, use of infrastructures and, and popularity of certain things. Um, of course, that, that's one thing to do, really measuring the real impact is a difficult thing. I mean, uh, I can refer there to the, the specific uh, conferences that have been organized on uh, on, on on how to measure uh, measure impact uh, um, earlier on, um, uh, and and that that's really a complete topic on its on its own. Um, and I think it's also good to realize there's kind of several levels of impact. We're also trying to keep track of that. It's not always easy. I mean, it's easy to to measure the number of uh, visitors to to specific web service or so. That that's very convenient to to do and easy to to aggregate in, in reports. But really, getting to the impact that you make is also yeah, and indeed looking into the research papers that result from data sets or for services. We're trying to do that. It's extremely difficult to get a very good coverage. Of over that. I think it's also one of the prime reasons why it's so important that people cite data sets with persistent identifiers, because at least that allows somehow to track down who has been using specific uh, data. But then afterwards, it also comes down a lot, like with metadata curation, for instance, to manual inspection and kind of evaluation. Um, but hopefully, um, yeah, also in the future, better uh, frameworks and methodologies for this will be will be developed so that we don't need to do all that manual labor anymore in order to make a kind of basic impact assessment because uh, we're really there only at the beginning, I think. If there's anything around, I'm also looking here at all the colleagues, I would be very curious to, to learn about it. Okay, thanks to Dieter. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. What I can say very quickly, because I won't be able to get too much into details, referring to the Operas ASBL uh, <coughs> research infrastructure is that metrics um, indeed is part of uh, the main services we are seeking to provide and also in an innovative way. So this is something I would say very quickly on track, but I could not go too much into technical details. Okay, thank you, uh, Alba. Quickly, I would like ju just to add that we have impact experts in house. Uh, they are the ones that have develop developed the European Impact Playbook. And since last year, we have tried also to adapt uh, this uh, this tool to to the research area. Um, and uh, for example, we organized just a conference. Uh, uh, last year to discuss that we saw that there was also an interest in the in in the playbook uh, from side of Daria that has cited it uh, in uh, their strategic plan. Okay, thank you. So uh, another question. My question is: uh, I think we all agree that we cannot innovate. Uh, innovate alone without cutting edge researchers. So my question would be, how are you involving uh, the cutting edge researchers, uh, their projects and their innovations in the research infrastructures for the next generation? Thank you, good question. So someone who has not uh, answered a question, please. <laughs> Simon, yes. In the moment, um, I would say, uh, well, I can answer for this particular infrastructure that uh, we created and I'm in, involved in. Um, I can say that uh, for this particular topic, so dictionaries, lexicography, semantics, and so on, uh, <clears throat> the problem really is uh, isolation. So everybody works in their own language, in their own uh, environment, in their own institution and so on. And it was uh, really difficult to, um, 
people to break the walls uh, and well covid didn't help uh, in this respect uh, <clears throat> but i think that uh, some of uh, of this need for collaboration and what is offered then to others not just to your you know isolated island uh, will also basically come at least in this area from from uh, this digitization initiatives, artificial intelligence, because when you talk about natural language understanding, somebody needs to describe it. So uh, <clears throat> I guess that at least I see this as a driving force here in this particular area, because uh, there are you know, initiatives from governments, uh, governments fund institutes for languages and so on so they need to provide the data and we are there to actually communicate that data further to further to other um, languages um, infrastructures and so on so this is how i see this role and when the data is available which is not available now at the moment this was really a hard issue ipr issues so intellectual property rights issues I think it's one of the, in this particular area, one of the most difficult issues because everybody uh, saw like 10, 20 years ago that they can really sell this data, but this cannot be done anymore, in fact, but it's still not available. So I think this infrastructure that I'm describing here is waiting for this to happen and provide the technical means to uh, make it available for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe Mathieu wants to say something for the shock. Yeah, so I'm not, I cannot guarantee how cutting edge it is, but uh, the idea of community and con contributions from soliciting contributions from the community is one of the pillars of the marketplace. And we went at great lengths to low a uh, low threshold and, and gathering, gathering people. And I'm happy to say that we, the, the group of people willing to actively collaborate and contribute uh, is, is indeed growing. So we have uh, a team of, of people who want to contribute. And um, I think uh, with Marketplace as a um, platform or a, one where would we knowledge hub, so a place where you can find out about methods. I think the, the direction there is more like from the more advanced or more knowledgeable to the more junior. So, so I would expect that the, the typical user uh, seeker out of, at the, on the, our marketplace on the platform is somebody who wants to learn something new, uh, a new method or new tool. Um, yeah, so this is the main direction. And one more thing maybe I would like to um, point out that I skipped from the, from the slide is that um, what I see as the next step needed is this uh, is integration of these various catalogs with um, better integration with hosting and rep services or repositories and processing services. So that uh, basically as a VLO is nicely doing it so that when I find something in catalog, I can very easily continue to uh, do something with it and not just, okay, I found it and then I go look it up, uh, but uh, kind of uh, ingest it or input it into a, a processing pil pipeline or some, some workflow. So that's, I think, where we need to go. And uh, in the context of, I would expect it to happen on large scale in the context of EOSC, or at least that's the promise. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, so uh, briefly, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> briefly, I totally second uh, Marc Jean, of course, on the the opportunity uh, of the EOSC and uh, GoTriple is a service integrated in the short marketplace, and we had uh, long discussions uh, between short project and gold triple project uh, to work on common synergies. What I can say also is that, for instance, we signed a MAU, a memorandum of um, understanding, with another project called Nianias, which has absolutely nothing to do with SSH because it is in STEM disciplines. But the objective, the common objective, uh, as they also want to integrate the ESC, was to work on uh, best 
best practices, common standards, also on communication and disseminations. And this kind of initiatives is very few step, of course, but the addition of these few steps can also help. And what I could say is that the objective is also not to start from scratch. And for instance, uh, for the Gautripal um, example, we reused an already existing uh, French discovery platform called Isidore with less uh, data and, and, and already three languages covered. And then we decided to develop it into, uh, yes, a further steps. So I would say this is also the way we, we go along. Okay, thank you. So, a third question. Anyone from the online audience or still here? Oh, yes, yeah. So, Kirill, please. Uh, hi. I have the, the following question. If we take a look on semantic web uh, infrastructure that was developed 15 years ago or something like this, and we can see that a lot of uh, development at that time are dead now because there was no easy way to adopt what they did it by the huge audience. I think uh, in our situation is nearly the same. For example, if I have uh, money to buy half a platform, which one to buy from these six? It's not clear to me. And I think uh, it will be necessary also to have some kind of uh, bridging, not to break the walls, but to fill the gaps between adoption of all these infrastructures by the real users of uh, the platforms. So it will be nice to hear what, how you communicate between you, between the different platforms, and how we to co communicate with you. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, anyone? Um, so I guess, I guess I can start because I'm actually the communication officer for the triple project. So this is kind of my question, I guess. Um, so obviously we are communicating a lot in between the projects because at some point we are part of each other's project to some extent always um, at conferences like this, for example. Um, about the communication with the actual users. So this is this is actually um, a huge communication and dissemination effort, as everybody knows who is communicating about the tool uh, or some kind of service for the for research. Because I um, think there's kind of this huge gap you have to bridge between developing a service and actually making it usable, and then getting people to use it, right? And um, what we are actually trying at this very moment is to engage users with GoTriple to actually try out the platform, to have demos of the platform at various events. Um, and But I think in the end, what will actually help us uh, communicate services like these and to actually get users to use them is training sessions. So it has to be part of a structured training for researchers best case would be PhD researchers probably. So they are familiar with these kinds of tools um, from an early age on, because this is the only way we can have a structured way of actually um, establishing these services. And of course, this is a huge effort and this is an effort that will be with us for the next decades, I think. Um. I agree. Maybe one last uh, answer to this. Uh, maybe Peter, as, as, as the host. Yeah, Peter, please. Um, yeah, I, I, I of course, uh, fully, uh, fully agree. Um, and I think what is important also in terms of communicating how to use something to uh, use a community is um, making sure that, that things don't become overly complex, but that they come in a kind of natural way in kind of uh, interaction, uh, for instance, just to, to give a simple example. Um, many people who are, who are looking for a specific subject uh, won't go to a specific platform. They will just use Google. So you need to make sure that whenever someone is searching for, I don't know, a specific uh, language resource or so, that they can also uh, find the resource in case 
through a simple Google search. And that from there on then, once you have landed at one of those uh, uh, landing pages, that from there on you can get into the more powerful platforms and systems to explore the language resource, to use it. Uh, and of course, and that's of course also, for instance, where the, where the SSH open marketplace comes in, that there is training material. I fully agree that's a very important uh, part um, where I think speaking for Claire and we've grown there over the years with getting more and more and better training material also through the great work of Juliana for instance of gathering this and making it available um, of course there's still more to do there but I think that's also something where ideally and I think that has happened already in, in to some extent um, that we basically through training material and communicating the training material can also show the synergies between the platforms that are here. And that is really great because that's that's benefiting everyone. That is absolutely benefiting the end users, but it is also benefiting uh, everyone who is here uh, around the table today because you have an opportunity of showing how good these things can collaborate and in the end, how they can stimulate uh, better and, and easier uh, research in the end. Okay, thanks to Dieter. I think we are uh, we have to approach the end. So let me just uh, say or just very short. Very short one. Okay, okay, Matthew, please. Yeah. One one addition that uh, I think uh, I hope that things get used uh, when they are so when they are useful they naturally get used. Uh, so what we need to ensure that they are and I still fully subscribe to what has been said that there's a lot of effort to go getting out and getting out the word. Um, uh, but uh, we, what so. What is important is that when we communicate, it's like a two-way uh, 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 communication when we go out and talk to the people that we get from them the information, if it is useful and how, what we can improve to, to actually uh, make it useful. And uh, one condition for, precondition for that is, is long-term support. So that the things, what you said, that the things have been there and they got lost, uh, how to... Uh, and, and I'm happy to say that for the marketplace, there is agreement for a long-term sustainable uh, sustainability of, of, of the service. So there will be capacities to, to, to run it, which is a precondition to uh, make it useful over the time. Okay, thanks, Mathieu. Thanks, everyone. So I again, uh, to, I, I'm, I'm not attempting to summarize all this because it will be too long. But just uh, let me say one last word, and I will I will sort of return to the first questions we got about the impact. I think uh, it is uh, from our point of view uh, as an infrastructure, we are here to provide support for excellent science and and research, which should eventually have impact. We all know it's very hard to to find out, but, but that's why we are here. And that's uh, when we talk about cooperation be, be among different initiatives, this should also be uh, the goal always, at least in the back of our minds, uh, when we do the practical things to eventually think about the users who are researchers who want to do excellent research. Maybe not only in SSH, right? Even though that's our main area, but for example, like Simon said, uh, people in language technology, language understanding and AI are definitely using our data. So we should probably open up to, to other areas as well and have this uh, broader thinking, especially when we see uh, the the breadth of, of uh, what, what these initiatives from Europeana to uh, to Clarin and, and SSH uh, uh, Open Marketplace and EOSC are doing and, uh, and to, to sort of uh, go in this direction, even in the small steps that we are doing. So once again, thanks to all the panelists, thanks to the audience, thanks for the questions, and now please enjoy your coffee.